a very interesting and very important topic for us as practitioners who are supporting entrepreneurs who probably are coming up with ideas and inventions and sometimes we're not sure how to approach it you are at the right place and without any further ado it is very exciting around that but before we have that i will now officially yes please do those those claps the love so that mr molef i mean mr koza feels feels at home and not nervous. So we have about 72% who have responded. I will end the poll here so that we get the results. I don't know if you can see, share, and now I'm sharing the results. There they are. And um, Mr. Koza, so this is what we are sitting with. Where, um, yeah. <clears throat> great. This is Where great indeed. It is, right? Where a tangible yeah. property right, about 54% to say is true and 46 say is false. Um, so I'm looking forward to see around that. And then the pool, the creepy, is it called the creepy crawly, the vacuum cleaner for the pool, right? At the bottom, was it invented in SA? Of course, yeah. none of us Googled to look for the for the answers around that. We're just yeah. following. Uh, so 65% believe that is true. And then um, a design may be registered on a sculpture. Um, and then um, what else is there? And the computer, um, the source code of a computer is protected under patent. True. Do you think we've got our logos well? Okay. So our, our Premier Soccer League people, <laughs> you are telling. <laughs> Uh, black like me, yes, um, that's true. Woolies, yep, that's true. Wimbledon, no, it's green. Um, yep, okay, Esco. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. You are very funny because <laughs> giving us our nightmare. And then lastly, Sassol is the correct one. So, yeah, so I don't know. <clears throat> We'll just screen grab these. I don't know if um, on the side and then we'll hand over to you. Thank you very much for making it. So everyone, please feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A section. Thank you. All right. Uh, can you remove the quiz from the screen so that I can share? Mm -hmm. There you go, so feel free to share. All right. Uh, okay, can you see my presentation? You just launch at the bottom right. So it's yes. a PowerPoint and then you've got it, but yes, you got the thumbs up from the participants. You see those thumbs up, right? Because they're coming up. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Tobeka, for the introduction. Yes, uh, when I got an invitation from EPI to talk to the practitioners about intellectual property, I got so excited and I said yes, and for one reason and for one reason only. Uh, you know, CEDA is one of the SME Development Association mm -hmm. that we rely on to spread the gospel about intellectual property. So if practitioners from CEDA have an understanding of intellectual property, that would make our life a little bit more easier because this is an organization that interacts with SMMEs on a daily basis. And for them, to be able to spread the message or the gospel of intellectual property will be a huge, huge favor for South Africa and a huge, huge favor for the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission uh, because they'll be helping us in spreading the information of intellectual property. Now, today I'm going to introduce intellectual property to our practitioners. Uh,
Hi, Ryan, can you hear me? Okay, our presentation is frozen. Um, we lost his signal. Can you hear me, guys? <clears throat> Please thumbs up or in the chat. Yes, okay. So it's on. Uh, Tepo, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm here. Are you there? Okay, no, I'm just worried. It seems like um, your your colleague, your manager is disconnected. Yes, let, uh, me quickly, let me quickly try to contact him. No, no, no. Are you able to continue with the presentation? We can share it. No, no, uh, he's the one that has the presentation. No, I can. we can share it on the screen. I have it, but can you talk to it or not? He's the one that has to talk to it. Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> so let's probably, they just got load. No, it's not load shedding time yet. It's not on the hour. Hi, Torega. Go ahead, Derek. I think he put ESCOM as one of the examples. That's why we are sitting with this challenge. <laughs> Edge, and I laughed at that, right? I was like, what is he doing to us? You see now, I tell for your boss. But uh, while we're talking, <laughs> I like all the laughter. Uh, why have, but Derek, can we have a quick conversation around just generally some insight around the space of um, how we started, how, how, when did it start? If you want to share some insight or put Bonnie as well, you know, this collaboration between the EPI, Ibasa, and CEDA. <clears throat> Am I putting you on the spot a little bit there? Um, I, I told you, yeah. I did. yeah, I think uh, f for me, um, I would say that it's quite a journey that we have undertaken. And like, uh, if you look, you look today, I think we are sitting with over 125 audience. Uh, when we started, you know, we'd have 40, 30 and all that. So, but we do appreciate the impact that it's having uh, going forward. And um, like we said earlier to say, uh, it, it's not about our topics, it's not about our conversations, but it's about us saying, what is it that can um, have an impact to the practitioners on the ground? Mm -hmm. And what is it that it would um, assist the practitioners on the ground? But also I think the power of collaboration, because uh, if you look at our relationship, it's um, from you know different expertise, from Ibasa point of view, business advisors and from CEDA, practitioners and advisors and business development officers and from EPI, the engine room, <laughs> because you guys are the ones who bring the technology that has kept us going for quite some times now. And um, I, I believe that that is one thing that we, 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 we are looking for. But also I think it's important for um, our uh, um, uh, colleagues to understand that uh, when it comes to hosting this uh, like now today we have a glitch but mm -hmm. uh, our our ambition is that everybody should participate and if you mm -hmm. know that you are an expert in a certain or particular subject matter mm -hmm. you are free to contact us and say listen i want to can you schedule me in your program mm -hmm. that i can address this and yeah because in, in most cases we put our program three four six months in advance but we can in certain instances where we can accommodate topics that we feel that because we also uh, driven by current affairs. Uh, like mm -hmm. you remember that in the previous one, we had uh, to address the issue of the budget speech, yes. which was not something that we had in a program, but we are so flexible that uh, we want to address the current affairs uh, situation. I mean, like now we are sitting with the issue of your uh, interest rate going up and the food inflation going up and all that. Um, we're talking about the inflation that is uh, skyrocketing and 7.1 mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. these are the things that we believe that uh, as practitioners, we yeah. can address, but with the objective of saying, how can we now, how can that information assist uh, entrepreneurs out there? So I think that for me, uh, we come a long way, but we are still, we still have a long way to go and we are still going to try and see how we can drive uh, collectively and collaboratively and making uh, this work for everybody else. Thank you. No, thank you very much and sharing that insight um, with Derek, <clears throat> because 
I mean, number one is the whole idea of collaboration and us creating the space together and getting to know each other and building the relationship of like-minded people working towards what we want to work towards and bringing all, in all our personal and organizational um, expertise. Um, and also just the topics. So typically that's why we like to actually have on a topic two presenters minimum, right? Just talking about our current situation where now we have um, one of our presenters who has a, a, a tech, tech problem. Um, that Tobega, Tobega, just maybe to check with you, is it possible that maybe if we call uh, 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 Mr. Mujalva to see if he can join using the telephone or something. Yeah, let's still check. I think Tepo's people. doing that in the background. So that's why. Go ahead, Tepo, you unmuted. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to call him and he's not picking up. You know what my problem is? My worry is now, I've just been blue chatted and soon I'll be out of power myself. So let me quickly try and contact him again. Okay. Um, okay, because we can also, Ryan, do you, you have his number? Can you just do that maybe in the background as well, please? Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can switch off video and just give him a call um, while we keep going. But also, I just want to see if there's anyone also who have questions in the background, if you, or any of you have questions while we're waiting. Um, but I think here's an opportunity for us to really all share some thoughts and ideas just generally. It's a general thing. I see there's two hands up. Um, I don't know. There was one hand that was on up by mistake, I think, it was on the entry already. There was a hand up. Um, and I don't know if uh, Maria, the second hand, wants to speak. Um, if you do want to say something, Maria, please feel free to put it in the chat, more or less what you want to talk about so that I can prompt you in to share your insight. But it would be nice to kind of get the idea of what would you like to say, hence your hand is up just so that in case it's an error, just put in the chat, no, I didn't mean to put my hand up and then I'll put your hand down. Same thing with you, um, Sarah. Um, if your hand is up for a question or an idea, please feel free to put it in the chat. Ah, Sarah's like, no, that was a mistake. I'm assuming Teresa put her hand up deliberately. Um, but before we, I, I let you in, um, can you just give us some insight on what you wanna say in the chat before I let you in? <clears throat> um, Maria, also it was a mistake. Thank you, Maria. No worries. I will put your hand down. Um, uh, but another thing while we're sitting here and thinking around also something you spoke about, uh, Derek, around the inflation and the impact it has on us as practitioners and on our clients, as, as businesses on, at the grassroots, at startups, at in the township, you know, um, what are some things we can start coming up with? What are some ideas that we can collaborate or think about or explore that will make our lives a little easier? Over to you, Putsepo. Yeah. Um, can I quickly give you his numbers? There's, no, no, no. There's... Please put it in the chat. It's fine. I think Ryan okay, has yeah. it. Yeah. There's, and then there's, we'll there's, there's a problem with the internet. Okay. At, okay. At the office. Yeah. But he said okay. you can call him. Hold on. Okay, so you can yeah, put it in the on, it you can put it in the chat, and then Ryan will. And then what you can do, I'll send you the link. We can send him the link on WhatsApp then, and then he can connect via the phone via yeah. his phone. Let, let me quickly write the phone number before I'm off myself. <laughs> okay, we have his number, unless it's a different number, but we have his phone number. Ryan, have you been able to get hold of him? Please let us know in the chat, okay? <clears throat> For an update. That would be great. Um, Teresa, did you want to say something? And then also while we add it, if anyone has questions, if anyone has questions or ideas on a topic, um, can we please feel free to add in the chat as well. Um, so that will be fine. Thank you, Tsepo. I'm just checking with Ryan so that he does the calling in the background. So I'll 
Yes. But Bonnie, do you want to share some insight? Oh, go, go. Um, uh, if uh, Bonnie can, I'll come to you now, Ryan, just to give him okay. if he has some insight on what's happening at Cedar, some interesting insights. It would be great if you could share something that is uh, uh, allowed. So I just thought, let me put that question to you and over to you, Ryan. Oh, no, I just said, um, yeah, so it's, uh, I'm going to send him a link and he's going to try and join on his phone now. So, yeah, hopefully we can get it sorted. Okay, great. Thank you, Ryan. So, uh, Buboni, let us know when you're ready. So, I see Brennan um, Williams is like behavioral competencies for entrepreneurs. Okay, so there's two hands up. So, Teresa's hand is still up and she didn't say anything in the chat that it was a mistake. Um, and um, Mabato, I see your hand is up as well. Do you want to just put in the chat what you would like to talk about or explore? Um, so that we can let you in. But Bonnie, over to you. Are you there, Budi? Uh, I'm not sure I heard what you, you asked. I was for. asking if there is any insight or information you have that you can share with us around what's happening in CEDA or anything. Oh, you, you, you're saying, uh, what is CEDA doing? Or not just what CEDA or what programs there are there that we could possibly um, share with, if there's something. I'm just not to put you on the spot since we're here. Um, it's an opportunity maybe to hear something around what's happening in different parts or what CEDA is supporting at the moment or looking for that we as yeah, practitioners. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there, there are various programs that we are, we are working on. For instance, uh, what comes into mind now is the 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 spaza shops okay. for instance that we uh partnered with the wnr cita on and on, on, on getting all those uh spaza shops tax shops general dealers who are registered to, with cipc to to become part of our training that we'll be providing to them on the stock uh, inventory management course, which is going to be a two-day course. We are targeting specifically those who are registered, whose businesses are registered. Okay. Uh, those people will, uh, after they've completed attending the course, get uh, a voucher of 6,500 for each uh, uh, um, spider shop mm -hmm. towards buying off the stock for their businesses mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. won't be getting hard cash they'll get a voucher whereby mm -hmm. they can go and you know complement their staff their, their stock in terms of what they are they are they are selling so we we encourage those who are uh, into general dealers puzzle shops mm -hmm. and tech shops uh to 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 avail themselves for this opportunity we we are focusing at uh getting around 4,000 spaza shops to, to become part of this. And we are communicating now with our branches to check from their database who are the people that they have there. But again, if you know of anyone who's got a tag shop or a spaza shop or a general dealer who's mm -hmm. registered mm -hmm. to communicate with the, with his nearest CEDA branch so that they can make use of this opportunity. That's one huge project that will be where we are looking forward uh, into into running with the WNR CETA. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the MER CETA. That one we've not yet started, but we're looking at uh, having 600 uh, automobile uh, practitioners. Those mm -hmm. people who are, who are involved in into, into automobile sector, mm -hmm. those would like to be uh, artisans, qualified artisans at the end. But okay. we're looking at those who are from a recommended status to say that this person uh, is, 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 has an experience in in the sector, but again, you could not proceed and 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 and, and attend a, what they call the trade test and become a fully qualified artisan. So we're also looking at that as well. We're also looking at also providing again those who are in this automobile uh, sector, mm -hmm. uh, three hundred of them with okay. a skills program training 
that will be again in the automobile uh, sector as well, the training around the, the skills in that uh, particular sector. We will be communicating with them once we've uh, completed our uh, internal processes to say, uh, where can we get those people? Yeah. Who are they? Are okay. they in, into the space? Mm -hmm. uh, are they gonna be able to sort of participate in this? Those are the two that I, I'm prepared to share with you now, seeing that Mr. Mijalifa has just joined us. Yes. Oh, this is exciting. So you guys heard it hot off the press. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Butboni, for sharing that with everyone. So it's about looking, uh, looking to support about 4,000 spas across the country. Yes. Yeah? <clears throat> and then so as practitioners, we can see if we have people out there that are in that space to help them with that. <laughs> to go through the training to support them so that they can get the voucher at the end. And yes. then um, about 300 automobile industry. So artisan or people who just do mechanic work? Yeah, if they, even if they're in mechanic, it's fine. Okay, there you go. There's awesome, no and about 300. Um, wonderful, thank you very much. So I guess they, what they can do is keep an eye on the website or visit their branches maybe in a week or two weeks, because you're still saying you're gonna share this with the branches, right? Yeah, when we, we, we're ready mm -hmm. and when we know which province are we gonna focus on. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Butboni, on that insight. Okay, and thank you everyone for your patience of just let, having us explore something else that's in the room and the knowledge that's in the room and the insights. And I'm sorry that some of you have to leave. Of course, I understand. And next time we will also make sure that we do not use ESCOM as our <laughs> quiz. <laughs> Anyway, on that um, on that note, um, because of what we will do. I, 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 Hi, hi, but Derek, go ahead. Oh, before we oh yeah, uh, yeah, before maybe, I, I just wanted to pass this from me first to say, we have shared the and the forms because we are looking at establishing our committees. We have shared via emails to the members, but also they can uh, check on our on our uh, website link for those who for those who would like to to be part of the committees. They can fill the forms and then they can just submit the submission on the form so that we can we can we can be able to have our members as part in in, in most of the committee so we have shared the information but we we make a call to request that please uh, you can uh, also make uh, yourself available uh, to help us save uh, the ecosystem better thank you okay great thank you very much derek so everyone um to be part of the committee and at Ibasa, there's forms. And where can they find those? Um, it's, it's, it's on our website. The link is on our website, okay. uh, but we have shared it to the members via email. But also, okay. they can get the link from our website and also from our LinkedIn page. Uh, they can get a link to 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 that information. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we will share the link in the chat in a minute during the session. Not right now. Um, because now, um, because are you ready? We will share your slide for you from our side. Okay. So don't worry about the slide. You can unmute yourself. Um, and then we'll go to, um, I think we're already on slide two. So we can hear you. There you go. Oh, no, we weren't there yet. Okay. All right, uh, did you, okay, all right, all right. Thank you can you. switch Sorry off your video, but because you can switch off your video. Down, uh, from the CAPs. Uh, I'm saying I'm sorry about that. Our interne uh, internet line is down from CAPC, so everybody is locked out. Okay. Yes, uh, this is what I, uh, this is the slide that I was busy with. Yes. Uh, one, I just want to introduce you to CAPC the legislation that we administer as far as IP is concerned, and then go to the definition of intellectual property together with the examples and the types of intellectual pro uh, property available to you or to all the inventors. Then I'll take you through uh, the registration and the commercialization of intellectual property. And uh, I will wrap it up with what CIPC has done over the years to try and make a contribution as far as innovation and creativity is concerned in the country. 
And if the time allows Tobeka, I will talk about some few careers for consideration either by you as practitioners or even the SMMEs themselves. Can I move to another slide? Yes, this is who we are. We came into being in May 2011. We are an, an agency of the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition. And uh, if you look at our name, there are two components. The company is an intellectual property. That's what we do. That's what our mandate is all about. We register companies of all types, your private companies, your personal liability companies, your public companies, we register cooperatives as well. However, we do not register close corporations anymore, but in terms of the legislation, we maintain all those close corporations that are registered on our database. And secondly, we register what we call intellectual property rights. And that's the subject of my discussion today. And for us to achieve our mandate, we rely on these three pillars, call them programs if you like. Number one, we want to ensure that all South Africans have access to our services and products. Number two, we do not only want to be seen as a registration office of companies and intellectual property only, but we also would like to make a contribution in South Africa to promote innovation and creativity. Then finally, our mandate has been extended to include regulation. In other words, all companies registered on our database, big or small, are regulated by CIPC. And therefore would like to improve our reputation as far as that is concerned. And these are the legislations that we administer as far as intellectual property is concerned. One, it's the Copyright Act. Now, this is the legislation that takes care of your literary, artistic, and creative works. When I talk about literary, artistic, and creative works, what am I talking about? I'm talking about stuff like music, paintings, photographs, a, a script for a movie, a script for a television show, a, a script or a lyrics written down, even films, whether they are documentaries, whether they are television shows, whether it's a full movie. That's the legislation that takes care of that kind of stuff. Then secondly, related to the Copyright Act, we have what we call the Performance Protection Act. Now this legislation does not protect literary and artistic works, but this legislation protects performance. And what is a performance in terms of intellectual property? Performance by a lead singer in a music production is regarded as a performance. And as far as films are concerned, an actor who acts in a movie, that act is called a performance. Therefore, it's protected not by the Copyright Act, but by the Performers Protection Act. Then we've got the Patents Act. Now, this is the legislation that will take care of inventions or innovations, if you like. Whether those inventions are technological or non-technological in nature, it doesn't matter as long as it qualifies uh, or it's defined, it, it qualifies for the definition of innovation or invention, it is protected by a patent. And I will share with you more insight into that. Then we've got the Designs Act. Many people still do not know that designs are regarded as a product of intellectual effort and are therefore protected by the design. All kinds of designs from clothes to motor vehicles to furniture, they are protected by this piece of legislation. And finally, we've got the Trademarks Act. Now this is the legislation that would protect the name of your company as an SMME. Uh, it will protect the name of your brand, the name of your invention, the name of your innovation. It also includes the protection of slogan, if your company has a slogan or the protection of a logo, if your company has a logo. Now that whole package can be protected simultaneously by the Trademarks Act. And colored in red at the bottom of my screen, it's the Banner Convention. 
Now, the Bene Convention, it's an age-old international agreement uh, that came into place in the year 1886 in a city called Bene in Switzerland, where all countries of the world who are members of the Bene Convention agreed to protect uh, literary, artistic, and creative works all over the world in the countries who are members of this international agreement. And by the way, South Africa is a member of the Ben Convention. As a result, South Africa is duty bound by its membership of this uh, convention to protect literary, creative, and artistic works of the citizens of the countries who are member of the uh, Bene Convention. For example, it's our responsibility to protect European music, American music, and vice versa. They also have a responsibility to protect our music, our paintings, and our photographs in Europe and the Americas. Okay, now let us come to the topic of the day, intellectual property. What is it? What does it mean? Well, there is an internationally acclaimed or agreed definition of intellectual property, and it simply means the creation of the mind. And what do we mean when we talk about the creation of the mind? By the creation of the mind, we mean if Mujalifa uses his mind and come up with something that is new, that is intellectual property because that is Mujalifa's creation of the mind. Now let's break it down a little bit more. Uh, the word intellectual property has two components. One, it's intellectual, the other is property. Intellectual comes from the word intellect, which has to do with the mind. And property, as we know, it's something that belongs to somebody. Now, intellectual property, it's a different kind of property that you know in that this is the property of the mind. And just to break it down a little bit more, I'm going to share with you just for two minutes a typical South African intellectual property story that I came across and that will help me explain or break down the concept called intellectual property. Seven or eight years ago, I was in Cape Town in a township called Langa, and I was talking to people, the community members about intellectual property. And after my talk, I was approached by a young man by the name of Lufefe Nomjana. Lufefe, L-U-F-E-F-E, -E, Nomjana, N-O-M-J-A-N-A. -A. Uh, I wanted to Google this guy. And after the session, he came to me and said, Mr. Koza, I have listened to you. And after listening to you, I think I've got intellectual property. And I said, yes, Lufefe, let's talk. Tell me all about it. What do you have? And what this guy told me really fascinated me. He said, Mr. Koza, I have come up with bread, B-R-E-A-D. And I was like, but Luveve, bread has always been there in the market. Uh, bread, it's not something new because intellectual property is about coming up with something that is new, something that nobody has ever made before. And he said, that's my point right there, Mr. Koza, hold it right there. My bread is different from any other bread that you have seen, Mr. Koza. My bread, it's new. One of the major ingredients in my bread, it's spinach. And number two, that's not all. Again, my bread does not have gluten. And when he immediately told me that one of the major ingredients in his bread is spinach, I knew that this young guy had intellectual property. Because ever since I was born, I have never seen in this country any bread made out of spinach. And I have not even seen this type of bread beyond the borders of South Africa. And right there, I stopped him and I said, Luveve, I agree with you. You have intellectual property because according to me, coming from the IP office, you have come up with a groundbreaking innovation within the bread space. And then I said, the conversation went on and I said, okay, Luveve, tell me, have you spoken to anybody about your bread? And what he told me got me very worried. He said, yes, I've spoken to a company in Cape Town by the name of Pioneer Foods. And I'm made to understand that Pioneer Foods, it's the company that produces the bread blue ribbon. And that got me very worried. And I became very direct and I knew why I was asking him this question. And I said, Luveve, what did you tell them about your bread? He said, no, I just told them that I've made bread out of spinach, blah, blah, blah. I, I became more direct and I said, Luveve, tell me, did you tell them your recipe or did you disclose your recipe? 
He said, no, I said, Luveve, that's very clever because the recipe is your intellectual property. The recipe of your bread is what you hide from the rest of the world. Otherwise, if you give the world your recipe, then the world won't be needing you anymore. They will be producing your beautiful bread from the comfort of your own, their own houses. That reminds me of another classic example that everybody knows, Coca-Cola. I don't think there's anybody in this room listening to me who knows the recipe for Coca-Cola. The guy who made Coca-Cola in 1886 is long, long dead, but the recipe for Coca-Cola remains one of the most kept secret in the world. And generations after generations are still reaping the rewards of the great, great, great grandfather who came with this beautiful recipe in 1886. So I hope that it explains to you what intellectual property is. And I had a few ways of advices to Luveve. I said, Luveve, now that you have spoken to me and now that I agree that you have intellectual property, I've got advices for you. One, come to CIPC and apply for a patent. A patent is one example of intellectual property. In other words, Luveve should come to CIPC and apply for a patent and protect the recipe, okay? And I said, number two, you can also give your bread a name and apply for a trademark, just like Blue Ribbon, just like uh, uh, Albany, because a trademark simply means a protected name. Can Luveve apply for a design? No, there's no design there in his innovation. Can he apply for copyright? No, there is no copyright. In other words, in the example of Luveve, Luveve can take advantage of these two types of intellectual property, namely a patent and a trademark, because his innovation can use this legal system called trademark and and patent. Now, if you look at this uh, uh, slide on your, on your screen, these are the four types of intellectual property that you can take advantage of depending on your innovation, depending on your invention, or depending on your product. Remember in the quiz, we asked the question whether intellectual property is a tangible or an intangible asset. And the answer is, it's an intangible asset. Can you see intellectual property in Luveve's bread? No, the recipe cannot be seen uh, because the recipe is what's inside the bread. Therefore, it's an intangible, it's an intangible uh, 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 type of property. And yes, Luveve came to us, applied for a, a, a trademark and a patent, which we granted and fast forward, Luveve has opened up his first outlet in Kaelicha Mall. And more good news, I am told that Luveve has opened up another outlet in Santon. I can see him in the Northwest. I can see him in Pretoria. I can see him in all the nine provinces. I can see him beyond the borders of South Africa. I can see a billionaire in the making. Now, the reason why I said Luveve should come and protect, and I'm telling you this as practitioners because this is the information that you should tell the SMMEs because you interact with them on a daily basis. Once you pick up stuff like this, or once you screen an SMME who comes up with something similar to Luveves, you should be able to tell them these words, that before they speak to anybody and disclose their recipe or their invention, they should come to CIPC for protection. And the reason why we say that is that I said to Luveve, once you have been granted a trademark and a patent certificate, you can go back to Pioneer Foods and talk to them because now you'll be talking from a position of safety because now you'll be having a piece of document that says that you are the owner of the patents and the trademark in this bread. Okay, so this is the information that we rely on you as practitioners to forward to the SMMEs. Now let us talk about these four types of intellectual property in uh, detail, starting with a trademark. What is a trademark and why is a trademark important? Because most of the people ask me, Mr. Koza, what is it in a name? There's so much in the name, you'll be surprised, okay? A trademark is there to protect your brand name, your company name, your logo, and even a slogan. 
And a trademark is important because it helps you to identify your goods and services from the goods and services of your competitors. It helps you to stand out and say, this is who I am and I can offer you a better service or a better product that is much, much qualitative than that of my, my competitors. It helps you to identify yourself and it helps you to protect your brand. It helps you to protect your brand so that nobody can leverage on your brand for commercial, for commercial gains. For example, we've got five major retail banks in South Africa, your Standard Bank, uh, your APSA, your FNB, and now of late the newcomer in the market, your Capitec. What do these uh, people, uh, companies have in common? One, they are competitors. That's what they have in common. Two, they offer the same kind of services to you and I. We are their clients. But how do we differentiate between these competitors? We differentiate between these competitors by their trademarks. When you see the color blue, already Standard Bank clicks to your mind. If you see the beautiful bright red and white, APSA comes to your mind. When you see a light green with a tree in the middle, you obviously think now about, you think now about First National Bank. Okay, can we move to another slide? <clears throat> yes, now I have spoken about a trademark. Please advise your SMMEs who've got companies registered with us to come to CIPC and apply for trademarks to protect the names of your companies. Their company names might be, might be small and relatively unknown, but who knows the brand might grow in the next coming five, 10, or even 20 years. Now let's talk about a patent. What is a patent and why is a patent important? A patent, in fact, all intellectual property types, uh, your patent, your trademarks, your design and your copyright, they all give you an exclusive right or an, a monopoly, if you like. In other words, they give you an opportunity to exclude everybody else from using your intellectual property without your permission and without remuneration. In other words, they give you uh, a monopoly uh, to use your patent, your trademark, your copyright, and even your design. Now we grant you a patent just like Luveve uh, for your product. We granted Luveve a patent protection for his innovation, which is a bread and a bread, it's a product. And he is the owner of that, of that recipe. Sometimes a patent does not protect only an innovation or an invention. It also protects a process, okay? We have a challenge in South Africa and our biggest challenge, which is a crisis, is electricity. And one of the reasons why uh, we have a challenge of electricity apart from corruption, one of the reasons is that our production methods of electricity are very outdated. Uh, it's a very lengthy process and expensive. But I can tell you someone out there, whether an individual or a multinational company is thinking about a new method which is easy, which is quicker, which is cheap, that can be used by the whole world to produce electricity. In the in if they can come up with that method, that method will be protected or that process will be protected worldwide by a patent, a patent system. Can we move? Next slide, please. Yes. And for us to grant you a patent, if you apply for one, just like Luveve, there are three requirements that CIPC looks at. One, it's novelty. In other words, your product, your innovation or in, in, in an invention must be new. It must be some, something that nobody has ever made it before. Number two, you must disclose to us, like Luveve did, your inventive steps from A to Z. When Luveve applied, we wanted to know the inventive steps. In other words, the number of ingredients, the type of ingredients, the quantities of the ingredients, and even the cooking method. And even the cooking method. We need you to disclose that information. And once you've done that, you've met the second requirement of us granting you a patent. Number three, we look at the commercial viability of the innovation uh, you're applying protection for. In the case of Luveve's innovation of bread, 
Does the market want it? The answer is a hoping yes. Who doesn't want to taste bread made out of spinach? Who doesn't, uh, 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 consumers out there are constantly looking for different, for different products and variety. Luveve met all these requirements and we duly granted him a patent. Okay, let's move on. Yes, this is a, a slide that explains novelty to you. Uh, please move on a little down. I want to show them something as far as novelty is concerned so that you begin to understand what we mean by novelty. I have used this slide to illustrate what novelty means. If you look at the left-hand side, there's a pencil. Hundreds of years ago, there was no pencil. Somebody invented a pencil and got protection for the pencil. Then years, uh, years on, because people never stop thinking, somebody looked at the pencil and realized, yes, a pencil is a good invention. You can use it to write. But what happens when you make a mistake and you cannot erase the mistake? Somebody thought about the idea of putting together a rubber with a pencil. And obviously he claimed protection for that improvement. He did not get protection for the pencil, but the improvement that he has made on the pencil. Now, as, as MMEs or as practitioners, look around yourself, what do you see? What is it that needs improvement? Because that improvements, you can claim protection as an innovation. Let's move to another slide, thank you. <clears throat> and this is the information that you should share with the SMEs, all right? Now, in this slide, the most important thing to note is the word colored in red, territorial. What does territorial mean? In fact, all these four types of intellectual property are territorial in nature. What does it mean? What it means is that if you apply for protection in South Africa, if you apply for a patent in South Africa, your protection will be in South Africa only. Don't take it for granted that your protection will span across the borders of this country, no. In other words, what it means if you need protection in Botswana or the US or you need protection in West Africa, you've got to apply for protection there obviously based on the national laws. That's what the word territorial means. Shall we move to another slide? All right, here is a design. Like I said, many people still do not know that designs are regarded as a product of intellectual effort and are therefore protected by this legal system called Designs Act. If you look at the, on the slide, there are two types of designs there. Uh, I've got earrings and I've got a screwdriver. Now, designs are protected there for two reasons. One, you can protect the design for the look. Two, you can protect the design for the function or for both. A design, it's nothing else but a, a, a pattern, an ornamentation, a configuration. All those words mean one and the same thing. However, what is important to note that there are two types of designs that you can protect. One is an aesthetic design and an aesthetic design has to do with the looks and there is the functional design that has to do with the function. If you look at the design of a screwdriver, it is protected not only for the look, but for the function, okay? And if I have to give an, another example of uh, an aesthetic design and, and a functional design. Let us look, for example, for a BMW 320 model. If you look at the BMW 320 F30 model, it's very aerodynamic in shape. And there are two reasons why it's so aerodynamic in shape. One is to, look it, uh, uh, to make it look beautiful. And number two, the reason why it's aerodynamic in shape is to reduce fuel function. So I'm sure those of you who drive the 320 will agree with me that when it comes to petrol, BMW is very sweet. And it is because of this aerodynamic shape. So when BMW comes to South Africa to ask for protection, to apply for protection for its design, they apply for protection to protect the look and the function of that design. Shall we move? Very informative. I love the questions. Keep, as we go to the next slide, keep the questions going. Tsepa will right. add some of them in the background. Over to you, Dada. Next slide. Yes. Now, uh, go back a little. Copyright at the beginning of copyright. 
because copyright tends to be a little bit tricky and I want to uh, bring that to the fore. Yes, copyright tends to be a little bit tricky. It's a little bit different from the other three types of intellectual property that I've spoken about because copyright does not give you one right, but gives you a bundle of rights. In other words, in one creative work, in one artistic work, in one literary work, you can have more than one right. And let me use music to illustrate this. In music, for example, if Mujalifa writes lyrics to a song, then Mujalifa is the owner of the lyrics. He's the copyright owner of the lyrics. And if Tobeka is a gifted composer and Tobeka composes the melody or the music as we call it in copyright language, Tobeka is the copyright owner of the music or the melody. The chain goes on. Uh, if somebody else performs in the musical production, in other words, if somebody sings, then that we refer to as a performance. That performance will never be protected by copyright, but by the Performance Protection Act, okay? In other words, the guy, the guy who perform uh, in our musical production will own the performance. Already there you can see that there are three different kind of rights that belongs to three different kind of people. Okay. And when the value chains goes on, the record company would pitch in, the record company will take my lyrics, the record company will take the melody by Tobeka and will take uh, the performance or the voice by person X and fix them into a CD. Does the record company owns everything? The answer is no. The lyrics is the copyright of Mujalifa and the melody is the copyright of Tobeka and the performance is the copyright of person X in the production. However, the production company will own what we call fixation rights. In other words, they own the CD, but they don't own what's contained in the CD because what's contained into the CD is the right that belongs to different to different people. That is why when the music starts selling, when the music starts selling, Mujalifa has to get a little bit for the lyrics, Tobeka has to get a little thing, uh, something for the melody, and the performer has to get something for the performance, and uh, the record company has to get something for their fixation, their fixation rights. And when it comes to, mu uh, to books again, if Mujalifa writes a book, Mujalifa has got about three or four types of, of rights in the book. One, Mujalifa has got the right to publish the book. In other words, uh, make copies of the book and sell it because he is the copyright owner of the book. We call them publication rights. Mujalifa also have what we call translation rights in the book. In other words, if my book is written in English and the French or the Italian public would uh, want to read the book and a company in Italy or a, a company in France would like to translate my book from uh, English to French, they've got to get permission from me because the, uh, the translation rights, they belong to me. Then we've got also what we call adaptation rights in a book. Uh, if one big uh, giant production company like Sony would like to translate my book into a movie or a stage direction, I own that right. That is why when it comes to copyright, it tends to be a little bit tricky, guys. And this is the information that I wanted to share with the SMEs. And those rights may be owned by different, by different people. Here's another difference that you should know note with copyright, we register trademarks, we register patents, we register uh, uh, designs, but we do not register copyright because the Copyright Act grants you automatic protection for your literary and artistic work, so you don't have to apply. The only exception is Philips. So far, CAPC registered one type of copyright, which is Philips. But we are in the process of registering all these other types of copyright because we have realized that the non-registration of these other types of copyright creates a problem, especially when there is an infringement. Because when it's an infringement, the copyright owner sometimes or always finds difficulty in proving ownership in the court of law. So the Americans have a depository system uh, that allows you to deposit 
all types of copyright from lyrics, from songs, paintings, photographs, and you get a registration certificate and that makes it easy because it proves owner, it proves ownership. We're looking at it, Kenya has done it. Uh, we even went to Kenya to show us how they do it and we want to do it. So in a few years, we will be registering all these types of copyright. Now, the requirement for us to grant you automatic protection for your copyright are different from that, from that of patents of designs and trademarks. With patents, we look at novelty newness, but we co with copyright, we look at originality, okay? With copyright, we look at originality. Let me use an example of music to explain what originality means. There are millions of love songs that are written in the world. Yes, millions and millions of love songs written in the world. Those love songs are expressing the same emotion called love. Are they the same? The answer is no. Why are they not the same? They are not the same because it is the difference in the expression of this emotion called love that makes them original in their own right. Some of them use different words. Some of them use different melodies. Some of them use different expressions even though they express one emotion called, called love, originality. Originality simply means your work must not be the, a copy of somebody else's work. In other words, you don't have to copy somebody's music word by, by word or somebody's book word by word. Number two, it must be a reduced to material form or must be in an eligible form. Somebody asked me a question a few years late, uh, uh, earlier and said, Mr. Koz, I've got a beautiful story in my head uh, that I want to write. Can I protect it? And the answer was no, we cannot protect a story that's in your head. Take a pen and paper and write that story. Then it would be an eligible work, something that we can see with our naked eyes. Then you qualify for protection. And the last requirement is anybody who comes up with literary, artistic and creative work, one must be a South African citizen, two, his work or her work must first be published in this country, or three, that person must be a citizen of a country who is a member of the Bene Convention. And by the way, South Africa is a member of the Bene Convention. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Yes, now if you look at this uh, uh, slide, all these are what we call literary, creative and artistic works that are protected by copyright. Anything outside this list is not protected by copyright. Let's start with literary works. Literary simply means anything that is written down. A book, a novel, even a PowerPoint presentation is uh, regarded as literary work and it's protected by copyright, okay? A stage direction, a script for a movie, even architectural drawings in our country are protected by, by, co by copyright. Yes, a PowerPoint presentation is literary work and it's protected by copyright. But who owns this presentation in terms of the Copyright Act? Mujalifa has prepared the presentation, but does Mujalifa own it? The answer is no. In terms of the legislation, the uh, employer owns the copyright because the employer pays Mujalifa Koza a certain amount of money each and every month for Mujalifa to produce uh, to produce a PowerPoint presentation. So they are the they are the owner. Number two, it protects musical works. Musical works I've explained those are the melodies. It can be either a hip hop melody, an R and B melody, soul or now of late Amapiano bid, which has taken the world by storm. Okay, number three, we've got artistic works. Those are paintings, those are photographs, those are drawings, we call them artistic works, and even sculptures. Remember in the quiz, we asked the question whether you can protect the sculpture as a design, and the answer is yes. You can protect this sculpture as copyright and as a design to maximize your protection to maximize your protection because in a sculpture, there is an element of design, okay? There is so on that note, of... Mojalifa, question just quickly. Does that include also recipes? Yes, yes. A recipe can be protected 
buy a patent, or you can give your recipe a name and add your protection in the form of a trademark. So you'll be having two types of protection. You are maximizing your protection so that if somebody infringes on your uh, uh, intellectual property, you can either use the copyright law system to challenge them or the trademark law system to challenge them, okay? Right, and then we've got films. Films is anything that is audiovisual, okay? A music video can be protected by a film because it's audiovisual in nature. A television show, okay? A documentary, all those qualify the definition of films because they are audiovisual in nature. Then we've got sound recordings. Sound recordings is the CD itself. And now because of the digital revolution, a USB can be regarded as can be regarded as a sound recording. If I do music and I put it on, uh, I put it on uh, a USB, that's a sound recording, it qualifies. And even if I put it on a platform like YouTube, I put it on a platform like uh, uh, TikTok, that is, there is a sound recording, okay? And broadcasting here, we're talking sounds and images, we're talking radio and we're talking uh, television. All those broadcasting are usually owned by broadcasting companies because they are copyright, okay? Then we've got programs carrying signals. Those are the programs that we use to carry signals throughout South Africa and the rest of the country. You've heard that most of uh, the Nigerians are guilty uh, of watching generation uh, without paying a TV license is because they tap into these program carrying signals and use them. So it is up to the South African Broadcasting Corporation to catch them because we are paying TV licenses and South Africans to watch Generation and they are watching it for free, okay? And then computer programs. In our country, computer programs mm. are protected by copyright. In America, they protect them as patents because they regard them as very technological in nature. Otherwise, in South Africa, and when I ask, the rationale is codes. It is for these reasons that they regard them as under copyright. All right. Mm. Yes. Let's move to another slide. We missed that a bit. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Now, was... this, yeah, this slide. By using this slide, I borrow it from an IP firm called uh, Spore and Fisher just to illustrate one or two points. The first point, if you look at this slide, there are all types of intellectual property. <laughs> Number two, something that I want you to note, these four types of intellectual property can be owned by one individual or different individuals or one company or different companies. Let me explain further. If you look at the bottle cap of these, mm -hmm. the bottle cap can be protected as a design. And number two, the bottle cap can be protected as a patent. Do you know why? Because in the bottle cap, there is a technology that is used to make sure that the medicine does not expire over a certain period of time. That's a technology right there. Number two, if you look at the name, the name of this medicine is Gaviscon. That's a trademark. There are other medicines like Gaviscon who do the same thing. If you look at this, this is the medicine uh, that helps us with heart pain. But Gaviscon is one example of the many medicines that are available in the market to treat, to treat, to treat uh, what we call heart pain. And if you look at the packaging again, it's very artistic in nature that can be protected by copyright and even trademark. And if you look at the medication itself, the medication can be protected by a patent, the formula, the concoction, if you like, okay? And then is there copyright there? Yes, there is copyright there. If you look at the packaging, it's very artistic, that can be copyright. And again, copyright can be protected or 
An example of copywriting that can be a manual of instruction. A manual of instruction that tells you and I how to drink the medicine, whether one or two times a day, that is literary work and that is copyright. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, in one innovation, in one product, there might be all four types of intellectual property. Number two, there might be different owners of those intellectual property. Right, next slide. You know, we're going, oh, okay, we're nearly at the end. We just have about five minutes, but. All right, let, 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 let me that, then wrap up. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have intellectual property like Luveve, before you get excited and talk to your friends and people about it, please tell all these SMEs, come to CIPC, register and protect. Because if it's not registered, it's up for grabs, okay? If it's not registered, it's not protected, it's not up for grabs. I'm sure you know uh, the Facebook story by Mark Zuckerberg and his friend. Uh, we are told in the media, Mark Zuckerberg told, uh, spoke to a friend about uh, the idea of coming up with a digital platform that the world can use to communicate that we today called, uh, we call Facebook. And a friend spoke to the daddy and uh, because people are people, they're selfish and greedy, they started running with the idea. Fast forward, they took each other to court and uh, where today we all know that the dangers of discussing your idea with a friend or a company for that matter, you are killing your chances of becoming a millionaire or a billionaire. Now, once you have that, you come to CIPC, you go to our website, www.cipc.co.za, uh, you go to online transacting, you go to IPE services, and then you register whatever type of intellectual property that you want. If you want a patent, there is an application for a provisional patent that you can apply. It's only 60 bucks. You don't even need an attorney to help you put up such an application. Otherwise, the patent law says, after applying for a provisional patent, which will buy you time for a period of one year, two months, then the law requires you to apply for a complete patent. And for a complete patent, you need the services of an attorney. That's where it gets a little bit complicated. That's where it gets a little bit expensive because of the nature and the complexity of your patent. You might pay, we are told, anything between 7,000 and 400,000, depending on, on the nature and the complexity of your patent. Okay, right. Now, let's go back to the, uh, the word territorial again. I said territorial means that if we grant you protection or we grant you a patent in South Africa, your protection in South Africa only. However, at international level where we hold discussions every three months about all these four types of intellectual property, they realize that it would be a cumbersome and expensive exercise for people to move from country to country applying for protection. Mm -hmm. It is for this reason at international level, at WIPO, that we decided to come up with a single international application systems for patents, for trademarks, and for designs. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you time. Because what we do here is we do one international search if you want to apply for a trademark or a patent or a design. That international search will give us an idea where you can protect your intellectual property. For example, when we do a search and it tells us in America that somebody already has what you have and has already protected, we'll never apply for protection in America. That will be a waste of time because they will decline it. Okay? And you pick, you, you tick, and when you apply, you tick all the countries where you want protection, you pay one single application fee. So such an international application system for patents, we call it PCT, short for Patent Corporation Treaty. And for design, we call it the Hague system because it was concluded in the Hague in the Netherlands. And uh, for trademarks, we've got the Madrid Protocol that was concluded in Madrid in Spain. So that's for you. Tell your SMMEs guys, if you've got something you want to protect it worldwide, 
these are the international application systems that you can take advantage of, except for copyright, because I said the protection for copyright is automatic. However, we want to put up a depository system for all copyrighted works in South Africa, just like in America. When we went there in 2019, we visited them to see how they deal with copyright registration in Washington. Okay, now just to wrap up, just to wrap up one last thing, and this please sell it to your SMEs. The World Intellectual Property Organization has come up with a system that is going to assist all the inventors out there who do not have the fees to pay for the protection of an invention that is patents because it tends to be very expensive. Now, WIPO came up with a system we call it, uh, we call it, um, uh, we call it a patent invention assistant system. And uh, this system or this uh, product, how it works is if you've got an invention, you want to uh, protect it internationally, you cannot afford, afford the fees, you apply for what we call an inventor assistant program. IAP, and I wanted to sell this, okay? In South Africa, it was launched. In South Africa, it was, yes, here it is. In South Africa, it was launched in 2017. Uh, it started in Colombia, Ecuador, and WIPO launched it here in South Africa. And I'm happy to announce that since we launched it in 2017, there's one guy who came up with a, weight, a waste management system. He has applied for it, he qualified, he was granted, and he is making money. Now, how does this system help? When you apply for this system, you're not going to pay a cent. WIPO will get you an attorney all over the world to do an application for you on a pro bono basis. In other words, free, you don't pay a cent. This is how as CIPC, we want to make a contribution in South Africa to encourage you to become innovative and creative because you know, once you've got an invention or an innovation, CIPC will take you by the hand, okay? This is the criteria, okay? The criteria is you must show that you've got a patent and a little knowledge about the patent system. One, you must have applied for a patent, okay? You must have applied for a patent. You must give us proof that you have applied and you're broke. You don't have the money to pay, okay? All right, you must be an SMME or an individual. If you are an SMME, you must be making less than 5 million per annum. If you're an individual, you must be making less than 30,000 an annum, okay? And it's going to, once you put up an application, there is a screening committee. Uh, one will look at the criteria for patentability. Is your invention new? Have you disclosed? Is it commercially viable? Have you applied? Once you've met all those requirements, we will grant you. Now, this man that I'm speaking to you about, came up with a very beautiful wage, uh, waste management system. He applied, uh, WIPO has given him an, an attorney. He's got protection in most of the countries in the world. They have commercialized it. The guy is a billionaire in the making. Because of time, uh, Tobeka, please allow me to stop it here. Uh, actually, I need, I need two or three hours for, for, for another training session, but suffice it for now. I think that would be all. Thank you very much. Let me stop right there. Thank you. Let's quickly go to the slide before this one, Ryan, just for people, the career path one, just in case someone wants to see what all other right. career, uh, career paths. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -mm. I, like to, I like to talk to people about this because I want them to consider uh, mm. a career in intellectual property. Okay. For example, if you're an SMEME or you're a practitioner for that matter and you need to branch into IP law, mm -hmm. one, you need a technical degree to become an IP lawyer. A mm -hmm. technical degree, I'm talking about a degree in science, chemistry, physics, engineering, IT, you know, all those biochemistry. Yeah. And then you need a law degree. After getting a law degree, uh, you, can, uh, 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 you can join uh, an IP firm like your Spore and Fisher, your Adams and Adams to gain the experience, sit for board examination and become a qualified IP attorney. You can specialize in patents or in copyright mm -hmm. or trademarks, whatever your preference is. 
-hmm. Here is another one that I want to talk to people about, especially as an MEs. People think that if you're not a musician, you cannot have a career in music. No, you can, okay? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is save money, put up a, a, a recording studio, and mm -hmm. record South African musician, young and, young and upcoming, and be on the borders of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Or you can open up a publishing house and publish books, publish all these publishing materials, mm -hmm. okay? And within the film industry, you don't have to be an extra. Put up money and be a producer. You can be a producer of uh, 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 music videos, uh, like this guy that I see who produced a lot of Ama Piano music video. I see him, what his name, I think his name is uh, Temba Dube, something mm -hmm. like that. The mm -hmm. young guy is making money out of that because he's a producer of 95% of Ama Piano videos that you can see. You can wow. be a music, a music producer or even a film producer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very much, very, very much, uh, Budkoza. Um, and I've just put your details. Oh, you stop sharing. Keep sharing, please, Ryan. Um, I've just put your details in the chat as well. But for those who might have their phone, um, I'll, it'll be on the share. Ryan will share. Um, you'll see the last slide is his information. Please contact him. Take a picture on that. And thank you very much. And then all the questions, I'm so sorry, guys, with all those questions as we go to the next slide. I'm so sorry we didn't get to directly respond to some of them. Um, I tried to respond to others, but I'm hoping my colleagues have done that. And yes, unfortunately, but some of the questions were answered. Okay. And then just to kind of prepare us for the next, thank you very much for making it here. And as usual, we have the Biz Clinic for all business um, owners who need questions, who would like assistance. This is a quick thing every last, every first Friday of the month. So please use your phone and register for that. So you have some insight from knowledgeable people. And then on that note as well, uh, some of you have been asking around the recording and everything. Um, please, uh, we'll, I'll share the link in a minute, but also our next webinar, see you in a month's time, is help your small business clients to use financial reports for growth. Okay, we cannot talk on financial anymore, but this is important that we have to constantly do it. Repetition works and it, eventually it will become familiar with you. Please take a picture of that or go to the link, our next webinar. And then in the next slide, we will then also discuss around, okay, there's a couple of programs that we're involved with. There's this DigiBiz. If you have a couple of entrepreneurs who are trying to move their business over to be more digital, this is for you. We are looking for entrepreneurs. We are looking for about 400. We're looking for 40, 40, 40 coaches who will support these about 160 odd um, entrepreneurs, 40 odd entrepreneurs, but you have to have a big number apply because of um having people and then the youth of having the same person go through the entire program lastly the youtube channel you can go to you will find us there that is where you'll have all the recordings i will put that in the chat in a minute and then i had already earlier on put some information on the on ibasa i think ibasa is next or sida on the next slide, please uh, feel free to go onto the CEDA, get some insight, keep your eye on there on what was shared earlier on today as small business um, owners. And Ibasa, awesome, great. Thank you very much, Derek shared with us as well, that if you wanna be part of their um, committees, that is where you go. And I had put it in the chat, but I will put everything in the chat once again. Thank you so much for everyone, thank you um to our speakers it was amazing um mr um mojalifa koza thank you so much and being flexible and coming back on and to all hundred plus of you who made it and stayed along and didn't feel they had to disconnect because we weren't there so switch on your video if you can put boni um but koza tap on j just so that you see everyone and please everyone have a good week ahead of you take care of yourself and uh, be, kind. be kind to your soul, be kind to yourself and to everyone else and take care of your mental and spiritual health and see you all in a month's time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you.
Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. Thank you.